Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to be sharing all of the curricula I have picked out for our family subjects. Let's get into it. First of all, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Kayla. I am a homeschool graduate, homeschool alumni turned homeschool mom. The 2023-2024 school year will be our sixth year homeschooling. I will have a fourth grader and a first grader this school year. And last week, I actually shared my curriculum choices for each of them individually. So if you missed those videos, you might want to go and watch those first. I did share their individual more grade level skill-based resources as part of a collaboration with some of my fellow secular homeschool mamas here on YouTube. The information for that collaboration is in those videos. If you happen to be searching for more curriculum choice videos for this school year, specifically from a secular homeschooling point of view, I highly recommend checking out that collaboration playlist from last week. I think between everybody, we covered curricula from preschool all the way to like seventh or eighth grade. So lots of great resources were shared. And if you like those types of videos, I hope that you will consider sticking around as I do share primarily homeschool videos on this channel. For us personally, we like to cover as much as we possibly can family style. So anything that I can cover with both of my girls together, I am all in. That doesn't work great for every family and it's understandable because some siblings work together better than other siblings. And of course you're gonna have families that have too wide of a gap in age or grade or skill level or understanding between the siblings. And so with those circumstances, learning any given subject together as a family just might not be feasible for everyone. It might not work best for everyone. It just so happens that for my daughters, it works really well. They enjoy spending time together. They enjoy covering the same material. I don't know that it will work like this forever for the entire duration of our home education journey, but for right now, it's still working really great and I am running with it. So what are we going to be covering together as a family? I've divided this video up by chapters as best I can. I definitely feel myself leaning more and more into a unit study style approach. So you'll kind of see what I mean throughout the rest of this video. A lot of the books and resources that I'm pulling from, I'm trying to make as many cross-curricular connections as I can and tie things together. Having sort of a big picture theme just makes my brain happy and my heart happy. And so I am really running with that this year. Okay, let's start with science. This year we're trying a brand new to us science curriculum. We're gonna be using Bookshark Science. Now, Bookshark is not considered strictly a secular science curriculum. I believe they describe themselves as neutral. Now, the reason that I am not holding up <laughs> Bookshark for you is because this science curriculum came in a giant box and there are a lot of moving parts to it. They send you everything. So it's not something that I can easily fit in the frame and show you. But if you wanna see everything that comes with Bookshark level C, which is the level we purchased and will be using, I did do an unboxing video for y'all. If you missed that video, I will put it in the cards for you. I am so excited about all of the goodies that came with Bookshark, especially the supplies for the hands-on activities and experiments, and also the beautiful literature that's included. We love using literature as really the foundation for all of our learning. I'm not gonna show you any of the books included in Bookshark because that's in the unboxing video, but I am gonna show you a few additional resources that I got to play along with what's already included in Bookshark. So for level C science, you're covering a range of scientific studies. For the first few weeks, we will be covering earth science, 
Then we will go into the periodic table and also learning about Marie Curie. Then we have several weeks of zoology that is based in geography. So you're learning about animals based on the habitat that they live and where in the world they live. And then the year of science wraps up with some botany. Now what I am most excited about in this level is definitely the zoology portion. Probably your kids and most kids absolutely love animals. Our whole family loves animals, really, but we have not delved into zoology formally in our homeschool yet. And when I realized we were going to be covering zoology, I really used that as a jumping off point for as much as I could. So in addition to the beautiful animal book resources that came with Bookshark, I purchased some more goodies. And just so you know, I will try my very best to link every single book and resource that I mention. It's going to be a long list, but they will be in the description box below. Okay, so the first book that I picked up to go along with our zoology studies is Wildlife Anatomy by Julia Rothman. We actually have her other three books. So this is the fourth in a series of these sort of, I would call them almost like published nature journals of Julia Rothman's. She has one for oceans, one for farms, one for food, and then she has the original nature anatomy, which just covers some general like fauna and flora and earth science and things like that. I just want to be clear. I don't think that these books by Julia Rothman are like must-haves in your homeschool library. I also don't think that they're really great as standalone spines, but they are beautiful and we pull them out often simply to enjoy the illustrations most of the time. But also, of course, there is information, there are facts in here as well, but the illustrations are just so beautiful. Speaking of adding to collections that we have, these have been on my list of books to buy for a while, and I definitely used the zoology thing as an excuse. I went ahead and picked up Over and Under the Waves and also Over and Under the Canyon. Both of these are by Kate Messner. These are also part of a series, and I now have the complete series, which, oh, I love that feeling of having the complete series. And I know she's probably gonna come out with more. I won't have the complete series for long, but it's such a good feeling right now. If you have not read these books by Kate Messner, they are just absolutely stunning, first of all. And they do a really good job of giving you a nice overview of a specific habitat. She also does a great job of having inclusive representation in her illustrations and stories, which is a huge plus for me. So I know we will be reading these and enjoying them and pulling them out as they tie into the specific habitat or animals that we are covering in our science. I also got a couple of fun resources having to do with this animal zoology theme. So I got this, it's the DK Ultimate Sticker Book Animals. And this is gonna mainly be for my first grader. I have a feeling that both of my girls might be fighting over this, but it is an activity book. So it has pages like this, where you have a page for Asia, a page for Australia, and then you have these sort of shadowed out figures. So your child's supposed to find the sticker that corresponds to this shadowed out space. There's also just some cool facts in here. It has a page on animal homes, on animal senses. All of the stickers are like real photos of the animals. And it does say that the stickers are reusable. I am actually just now noticing that. That's even better if we can actually have multiple kids use this or they can use it over and over. The other fun resource that I picked up to go with this world animals theme is this right here, a world of animals. Learn to draw more than 175 animals from the seven continents. Now this one I got mainly for my fourth grader. She is a natural artist and she loves books like this 
that offer these step-by-step -step drawing tutorials. She didn't have one for animals yet, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to grab this one for her. When you open the book, there's a table of contents, and you'll see that each of the continents are represented. There's a little section on how to use the book, and there's also a supplies list page. And then there's this really helpful spread. So this is talking about the main categories that scientists typically group animals into. And then this page is talking about some of the main habitats that we have on Earth. And then you go right into the continents. So it starts with North America and it just goes through all of them. So here we have this page spread for Europe. So it has four key habitats for Europe right here. And then after you learn about the region, the habitats and the animals, then you go in to learning how to draw each of them one by one. And then in the back of the book, there's an index of all of the animals that are included. And this book also has stickers in the back too. So that's super fun. And in the very back of the book, there is this fold out poster, a map of the world with all the different animals on there. And then the poster's two-sided. So on the other side, we have the animals divided by the seven continents. This is a really good find. I actually, this is even more than I thought it was gonna be. I know my daughter's gonna love this and it's gonna be really fun to be able to tie in some art and drawing with our science, our zoology. I'm kind of doing this out of order because I got excited about the zoology, but we're gonna be covering earth science for the first few weeks of level C of book shark science. And of course they already include all of the books and spines that you need, but I have a couple of additional resources for the earth science part of it. Now this book I actually already had on my shelf, but I, pulled it out because I realized we're gonna need it. We needed it the first time we did earth science and we'll use it again this time. This is the street beneath my feet. And if you haven't seen this, it is really, really cool, really, really pretty. The way that it works is you read through the whole book like this and it's showing like layers as you go. And then when you get to the back of the book, you actually can pull out this entire thing and it's double sided. So it will show you like gorgeous cave formations all the way down to the center of the earth. She actually has another book that is very similar in the sense that it's a pull out book. This one is The World Around Me. I have had my eye on this for years and I decided to go ahead and get it. This one says, step out of your front door and take a journey across land and sea to visit 60 countries around the world, view famous landmarks, experience cultures, and travel through breathtaking natural landscapes. So there's definitely some animal life included, but there's also some great social studies, cultural studies aspects to this book. The illustrations are gorgeous. There is a lot of text and information, but it's in bite-sized sections that's very kid-friendly. We will go through geography very naturally as part of our history studies and also part of our zoology study with science. I thought that this book would be a great additional resource to have on our shelf. And of course, it does the same trick. I haven't looked at it all the way. I'm really excited to do that. It also has a world map in the back. I can just tell this is chock full of some great information. So I'm excited to have both of these now. The other thing that I wanted to tie in with this theme of animals is our poetry. So we're super relaxed about poetry. It's just something that we will enjoy and read together. We have never really been super consistent or formal with poetry study or poetry memorization, but I wanted to add to my collection of poetry books and I wanted to do so based on that theme of animals, zoology. So this is what I picked up. This is a classic, Eric Carle's Animals, Animals. I've always wanted to have this in my collection and I didn't have it before and now I do. So this will be a great addition to our morning time, we call it heart time, 
our heart time shelf. For this year, I really would like to try to have a dedicated poetry tea time at least once a week. We've not been consistent with that in the past, and I know my girls would really enjoy it. So I'm going to try to make the effort to make that happen this year. The next poetry book that I picked up is the National Geographic Book of Nature Poetry. And my copy is quite worn and beat up looking. That's a common theme you're gonna see with a lot of these books because I did get most of them on thrift books. I don't usually buy books brand new. It just so happened this year that the time period where I was accumulating a lot of these books fell right on the time when Amazon and Target were both having their buy one, get two books free, or buy two books, get one free. I don't remember exactly, but something like that. They were both having that sale at the exact same time. So I spent hours on my computer literally price comparing between Target, Amazon, thrift books. I wanted to make sure I got the best deal on each and every one of the books that I wanted to buy. It takes effort, but you can definitely save a lot of money doing it that way. The last book for poetry that I got, and I cannot believe that I found this in such good condition on thrift books. I got this for such a steal and I have been wanting it for so long. This is Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. It is an animal poem for each day of the year. And this is really similar to the nature poetry book that we've used in the past where it has a specific poem for every day of the year. I think that this collection must have been done by the same publisher because the layout of the pages is identical to that nature book. So you get a table of contents for each month and then all of the poems for that month. And just like that other book, the illustrations are gorgeous. And of course the front cover is also stunning. The spine is beautiful. Now this one from Thrift Books does have some very minor damage. I'm okay with that. It's pretty insignificant in my opinion. And I'm just not realizing that I didn't really show you the inside of these others. This one also has really great illustrations. These are more um, photographs, it looks like. So yeah, these, these poetry resources are definitely going to be ones that we keep and use and come back to for years, not just for this school year. But I'm very excited to have more animal nature themed poetry to go along with what we're gonna be learning in science. Okay, so that kind of brings us into history. We're gonna be using History Quest Middle Times. I am so stoked to get into the medieval period. There's just so much fun stuff in that era. Yes, I'm romanticizing it because, you know, people died of black death, but it's fun. We loved History Quest early times last year, so this was a very easy decision for me this year. My only concern with this is actually covering it in one year because with early times, it has taken us two years to cover what should be one year's worth of studies. It's a lot of information and when we dig deeper and add more things in like we always do, it just tends to get away from us time-wise. So we will see how that goes this year. If you're not familiar with History Quest, I do have a video that kind of explains how the curriculum works, showing you the early times level, which is ancient history. This level basically works exactly the same way though. You have your reader, you have your teacher's guide. This also has all of your activity printables in it. If you want to expound on this, History Quest can be a very literature heavy, literature rich history curriculum. They do include a nice long list of suggested literature that you can choose to include as you go through these units. I just kind of barely started with the tip of the iceberg. I got through this whole first page and part way through the second page. I still have more planning to do with this, but basically what I'm doing is I am making a key for myself. They leave you a section on the end here to check off the books that you have. And instead of putting a check mark, I am putting 
either thrift books or a check mark if I already have it or an L for library. Like I've already checked and our local library has that book. So I'm not going to buy it because I know we're only going to read it for that unit, if at all. I also marked a couple of these as books to get on Amazon because the price was better there. With early times, we read most of the books that they suggested, or we found an equivalent to the book that they suggested if we couldn't find that exact one. And for us, it was very enriching. We really enjoyed all of the suggested literature. So I definitely have some more book shopping in my future. If I can find it at the library and I know we're just going to be using it for one or two or three weeks, that's the route that I will go. But as I go through this, if I see a certain book that I'm like, you know what, my girls are going to want to read that over and over. They're going to want to keep going back to it and I can find a good deal on it, then I will go that route. So let me show you some of the resources that I've already picked up. And I guarantee there will be more at a later date, but this is what I have already. So first thing, and I've already showed this before, is we have our history timeline notebook. This is from School Nest. I use so many things from School Nest. My homeschool planner is School Nest. We use her graded notebooks. This history timeline notebook has served us really well. We've been filling it in little by little as we went through ancient history. And so we will just keep using the same notebook. We do it together. It's our family timeline notebook. And what is sticking out of it is the current sticker page that we are using. Um, these timeline stickers are also from Pandaya Press, the same publisher that makes History Quest. I have these out right now because we are wrapping um, on Rome, and so we're going to be using a lot of these and putting them in our timeline. For Shakespeare, I picked up a few things. The first thing that I picked up, and this has been on my radar for a while, was how to teach your children Shakespeare. So this is really a resource for me, and I have not started reading this yet, but I'm very excited about it. I've heard good things. We're in elementary. I am not expecting them to do this really deep, thorough reading of all of Shakespeare's works. I know that we will revisit Shakespeare later on. We will come back to him. So my goal this year is to really just give them a broad overview of who Shakespeare was, some of the contributions that he made to the world, and just to get them familiar with some of his works so that when we dive deeper in later years in middle school and high school, I hope that they won't feel intimidated or like it's boring or over their heads. I hope that this introduction will pique their interest and motivate them to dive even deeper later on. So I got two children's anthologies for Shakespeare. So the first one I got... You know, I'm a little underwhelmed. I'm going to be honest. This is Tales from Shakespeare, seven plays presented by Marsha Williams. And so this includes A Midsummer Night's Dream, The Winter's Tale, Hamlet, The Tempest, Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, and Julius Caesar. And I got a very good deal on thrift books. And you know, the book is a little wonky. It's been loved. The reason why I am underwhelmed. So this is definitely an older collection. And you can tell just by the layout and the illustrations. But like this spread is for Hamlet. The text is very tiny. And it is jam packed with illustration. But again, the illustrations are are small and they're kind of in like almost comic strip sections. It's not bad. It's just not necessarily my favorite way to visually break up a story. And some of the illustrations do look a bit dated. The next one that I got is much newer and more modern. So this is a stage full of Shakespeare stories, 12 tales retold for children, written by Angela McAllister. And you can already see this is a much prettier book. I think I did get this one new. Um, it just happened to work out where it was a better deal to get it new. So this one has Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, A Midsummer Night's Dream, The Tempest. Those are all in the other book. 
but it also has Twelfth Night, Othello, As You Like It, Much Ado About Nothing, The Merchant of Venice, King Lear, and then it also has Julius Caesar, which is included in the other one. So this has more than the first one. That's already a plus. I already like the table of contents, just how that is so minimal and nice visually. So when you go into each play, each story, you get this intro page. So this is for Macbeth. And then the next page is it introduces you to the cast of characters. I really like that. That's very helpful. And then you go right into reading it. And again, they're fitting a lot of text to the page. They have to do that. These are really long, right? So the text size is not my favorite, but I understand that just practically that's what it needs to look like. There are illustrations on each page. Usually they're keeping it to just one illustration per page, which helps my brain. It's not so busy and distracting. The art style is a lot more appealing to my eyes anyway. I really, really think that this is a beautiful book. And then in the margin, it tells you what play you're on. So as you're like thumbing through the book, you can easily see where plays start and end. And then in the back of the book, we have a whole page about William Shakespeare. And then it gives you more details about each of the plays that are included in this collection. So it tells you the time period that they were written in and sort of the themes that are being addressed in each one. I am definitely a fan of this over this. I'm probably going to sell this. When we get to Shakespeare, which will not be until next June, so it's actually going to be one of the last units that we do for this school year, we're going to have a read aloud that goes along with that study. But if I share all of our literature and read alouds with you guys in this video, it's going to be like over an hour long. So I'm not going to do that to you. I will make that into its own separate video and that will come out in just a couple of days. So stay tuned. Okay, for art, I am keeping it simple. I'm using something that I already have on hand. I did not get anything new because I didn't have to because when I bought these, I bought all of the levels all the way to fifth grade. We're gonna continue using Harcourt Art Everywhere. This past school year, we used the second grade level. Because we're covering it family style, I'm just using a level that's kind of between each of my girls. So this year we will use the third grade level and I'll have a first grader and a fourth grader. So that's still in the middle of them. These are actually textbooks that are designed to be used in a classroom setting, but I find it really easy to adapt them to our homeschool. They are out of print, which makes them a little tricky to find, but if you find them, they're extremely affordable. We do have trouble being consistent with formal art studies. It's not something that I really stress about because my girls are so naturally creative, especially my oldest. They're constantly looking up art projects and making art all on their own in their free time. So I don't know how much of this we will actually get to, but I have it on hand. I really like the way that these books are laid out. They're very easy for us to use and to cover the material together family style. Each level covers the elements and principles of art, which I really appreciate. And then it's divided into six units and 30 lessons. Each lesson includes vocabulary that will be highlighted throughout the whole lesson. All of the works of art that you're using, that you're looking at, are included in the book. The art projects are included in the book and they're always written with super simple, easy to follow steps. They have illustrations that are very helpful for kids. There are cross-curricular tie-ins as well, like this is a reading activity. So you read a paragraph that's talking about this painting, and then you think about what is the main idea of the text that we just read, and what three details tell me that that is the main idea. Each unit concludes with a review section, which I really like. It helps me to see how much my kids are actually retaining from this. In the back of the book there's all sorts of helpful tidbits um, like this section on art techniques which covers everything from different techniques for drawing 
to paint, working with clay. There's these nice visual reminders of what each of the elements of art mean and how we can identify them. And then in the very back, we have the gallery of artists. So these are all of the artists that this particular level is going to feature works by. For someone who does not consider herself to be an artist and does not know very much about art at all, these books have been extremely helpful for me. Now, another thing that we're going to be covering family style this year, it doesn't really fall into any of these content areas, but we are going to be covering grammar family style. And we're going to be using Beowulf's Grammar by Guest Hollow. These are just the workbook pages that I have recently gotten back from my printer. The program is divided into four parts. So you'll see this is part one. And I'm hoping to cover two parts this school year and two parts in the following school year. I don't want to invest too much time into grammar. I don't think that that's necessary for us. There are quite a few activity sheets included in each portion of this. So we'll see how much of it we get to, but I am excited to try this out with my girls. It looks like something they'll really enjoy because of how hands-on it is. The last subject that we're going to be covering family style is Spanish. And if you've been following along for a bit, you know that I always want to get to Spanish and it just hasn't happened for us yet. So I didn't get anything new. I'm going to try and use what I already bought last year which is Beautiful Mundo Volume 1. This Spanish program is really all about introducing Spanish phonics. One of the nice coincidences of me not using this last year is that there are a lot of animal connections in this curricula. And since we're going to be learning about animals, that feels like it's going to work out perfectly. Beautiful Mundo is a literature-based Spanish phonics program. So I did pick up the books that are the spines for that curriculum. We have De Colores and other Latin American folk songs for children. This is a beautiful book of songs with really gorgeous illustrations. I'm hoping that we can learn quite a few of these this year. We have Vies Deditos, Ten Little Fingers. So these are more songs and also rhymes from Latin America. This book also has really lovely illustrations. Then we have Todo Es Cancion, which is a book of poetry. There are a few illustrations in here, not as many, not as colorful. So we will see how much Spanish we get into this year. I'm really hopeful that we will be able to complete this level of Beautiful Mundo. My goal is to try to do a little bit each day. Even if it's just like five or 10 minutes a day, my goal is consistency with Spanish. Okay, that is everything. That's all of our family curricula that I am hoping we get into this year. In the next video, I'm gonna share with you all of the beautiful books that I've chosen for family read-alouds for this school year. I chose them myself. We are not using a literature curriculum this year. So if you're interested in watching that, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you and your family are covering any subjects or topics family style this year. And if so, so what resources or curricula are you most excited to cover family style? As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.